Hi guys, welcome. If you are new here, my name is Brittany, and today I filmed a humidity and sweat proof makeup look. It's going to be based off of the foundation that I always apply on my brides. So if you're interested in learning how to make your makeup last all day through the heat and humidity, as well as have a sweat proof makeup look, then just stay tuned. Okay, so to start off, I'm going in with the Drunk Elephant Virgin Marula Luxury Face Oil as my moisturizer and I'm going to be pressing this into the skin. Using my Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, this right here is a ride or die. It's a must have in my kit at all times. I put this on all of my clients just to help moisturize the lips while I continue on with the face. Using my Cover Effects Perfect Setting Powder, I'm applying a very light amount all over my face to help result in a velvet finish on the skin. This is also going to help make my, the makeup last all day long, but it's very important to only apply a very thin layer. And then using my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray, I'm going to put this all over the face so that way when we go in with the liquids on top of the powder, it's not going to look cakey. The setting spray helps to lock everything in, but take away any excess powder that may be laying on the skin. Make sure this dries completely before heading in with your primers and I am using my two favorite all timers here. I'm putting the Milk Hydro Grip all over the face. This primer is like super glue for real. Your makeup will not budge. This is another ride or die in my kit and I apply this to literally all of my clients. With my Too Faced Peach Primer, I'm focusing this in my T-zone because it really helps to blur the pores as well as keep this area nice and matte throughout the day. Okay, this foundation, you guys, talk about a beautiful product. And these concealers, everyone knows about for a good cause. So I'm going in with the concealers first and applying the lighter shade to all the areas of the face that I want to bring forward. And I'm using the darker shade as a cream bronzer. I always use creams and powders when it comes to longevity. When you go in with cream products first, it's almost like using a primer, right? So it ensures that the color will last throughout the day. Sometimes the powders can fade off throughout the day, but having a cream underneath is really going to help make sure that the color will last through sweat, humidity, whatever the day may bring your way. Going in with the foundation on all of the areas of blank skin, I'm really using this product as a mixing medium for the concealers. Of course, this adds more coverage as well, but it's really to help blend those concealers in beautifully. This also will help you make your foundation last longer because you don't have to use as much as you normally would. So I'm not gonna lie, I did think about editing this part out, but it's a great tip when it comes to making sure that you don't have that bold line of bronzer on your jaw. So you make this super cute double chin face. Mm-hmm. And blend it out. Always make sure to blend the product onto your ears and even that spot right behind your ears because in case your hair is gonna be up, you're gonna be looking sideways, anything like that. You want everything to look the exact same color. Okay, so using the Beverly Hills Highlight Stick in Banana, I'm really using this product to add some brightness to the look. It's definitely not necessary, but I love the way that a yellow product results in really making everything look much more fresh and awake. I also love putting it right underneath my contour because it's gonna make that cheekbone look even more prominent. You know, you're putting those highlights and contours right next to one another, so it makes that shadow even more visible. I'm using a fluffy eyeshadow brush here to blend out this product. It's the same brush that I use to blend out my concealer. I like using a fluffy eyeshadow brush because as you can see it really hugs all of the contours around my nose and it really blends those creases underneath my eyes much more smoothly than a brush or even a sponge would do. Just because a sponge kind of picks up some of the pigment, a eyeshadow brush will make sure all of that color is still there, but the lines are blended in really beautifully. Mm -hmm. 
going in with this gorgeous cream blush in the color Sunset Strip by Nude Sticks. Again, this is like a primer to the powder blush we will be adding later. I make sure to put a little on my nose and cheek, even some around my lips, just to really tie the whole look together. I don't know what it is about my face, but powder blush, my skin just eats up, so using this cream blush is really going to help make sure I keep a rosy tone to the skin. Using my very loved, clearly, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter as my cream highlighter. This guys is such a gorgeous product, it really gives that lit from within look. It's so beautiful, I use it on all of my brides, and it's super long lasting. Going in with a beauty sponge, I'm just blending over the entire face, not only to blend everything, but also to absorb any extra product that might be on the skin. I'm then using the same Cover Effects powder again, I'm not baking, but really pressing that powder into the skin with the beauty sponge. This will make sure that all the creams we put down will not budge, no matter the weather. I make sure to only focus this powder exactly where I need it, since this is a dewy makeup look. I'm taking special care to put it under my eyes, on my eyelids, into the creases around my nose and underneath my contour line. Because for me, these are the areas I really notice my makeup will kind of move around throughout the day. Going in with more setting spray, letting that dry, and then I go ahead in with my powders. Using the Bobbi Brown Bronzer in Natural, I'm using a huge tulip brush and bronzing all of the perimeter of my face with this product. I'm also using a very detailed smudging brush to contour my nose and I make sure to bring that powder all the way up to the very start of my eyebrow because this is going to help elongate the nose and give a much more snatched look if you will. I love having a little bit of that contour bronzing powder right at the start of my eyebrows. It just brings the whole look together in my opinion. So I only pointed to the top highlight shade, but I'm actually mixing the two on the right side, the Summer and Moonstone shade, as my powder highlight. And you guys, can we say blinding? Like, are you kidding me? Like, talk about a dewy look. This is the highlighting palette. It's not going to have any of those glittery chunks. It's just a beautiful sheen that makes the skin look g just glowy. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful, right? I love bringing a little bit of my highlighter on the sides of my nose. You can just see when I turn my head, it gives a beautiful extra glow to the skin. And I put a little bit on the top of my Cupid's bow as well. For my blush today, I am going in with this super beautiful color. It's by Bobbi Brown in the shade Nectar. It's definitely pink, but has this really pretty apricot undertone. I like to bring my blush, like I did with my cream, all the way up to my temples, on the forehead, the nose, even under my eyes, especially for summer. I think this looks really pretty. It's almost like you've been kissed by the sun, you know what I mean? Getting my brow hairs out of their natural habitat and waking them up a little bit, I just use a spoolie brush and I put my eyebrow hairs into the opposite direction. Then using my MAC Fix Plus, I spray that into glycerin soap. Yes, that's right. I got my soap from Whole Foods. Just make sure it's glycerin based and it's clear, not like that white type of soap, you know? Talk about sweat proof heat proof, life proof you guys. Your eyebrow hairs will not budge and it's so cheap. I think my bar of soap was like $1. I make sure to bring my hairs where I want them because this is gonna act like super glue. 
I like my inner corners going in the opposite direction, so opposite of the natural hair growth. So they're kind of like facing each other. Um, I like that whole bushy, fluffy brow look, and that's what I'm bringing here into this look. I'm then going in with my Urban Decay brow blade to draw individual hair strokes because for this look, like I said before, I really wanted a fluffy brow, nothing too groomed or precise. Now hopping into my Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette. This is me deciding which shade to use as my transition shade. And eventually I decided on Perfectionist. I don't want this to be too visible. I'm really just using this shade as a contour and lightly applying it with a large fluffy brush into the crease and under the eye. Just to give some dimension to the look, I feel like every eyeshadow, no matter what, you need this little bit of color just to pull the whole thing together and create a little bit more of contours, like more visible crease and more definition under the eye. Using my NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk, I'm going to be placing this in a generic shape on my inner and outer corners. I'm applying this color so that the shades I put on top will, one, be true to color, and two, be more pigmented than if I were to just go straight in with the shadows on my bare eyelid. I'm blending the white into a shape that I'm wanting the colors to be in. So I'm going to kind of create a little bit of a wing on the outer corner and a little bit more of a rounded shape, if you will, on the inner. It's kind of like a halo shadow, but we're not going to be doing a traditional halo. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Using this vibrant yellow shade called No Joke, I'm putting this color on the inner corners of the eyes. This is definitely a buildable shade. The more you put down, the more vibrant it becomes. And I was actually pleasantly surprised at how beautifully it blends too. It wasn't patchy at all, which is not normally the case for these more vibrant colors. Going in with Tipsy Girl, it's this beautiful hot pink shade. I'm going to put this in the outer corner of the eye. Okay pigment, like do you guys see this? I'm putting this shade specifically on the outer wing first, then blending it in towards the yellow corner because I want the majority of that pigment to be on the outer part of the eye and lighter as you get closer towards the inner part. Almost like, like I was saying before, that halo eye, but we're using different colors for the inner and outer corners and it's much softer than a traditional halo eye. I keep repeating the process of laying down color and blending out the lines until I get the opacity that I'm looking for.
using I'm In It. It's this really pretty iridescent pinky shade. I'm using my finger to put this in the center of the lid. I originally wanted to keep this part blank, but I thought that the super fine glitter in this shadow would look really pretty as like a soft pop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I thought it brought the whole eye look together. And I'm bringing this shade all the way up to my brow bone so that the glitter is sporadically all over the lid. I blame Euphoria for this. I just got into the show and I'm addicted. I completely understand why there were so many makeup trends about this show a while ago. I know I'm late to the whole trend and everything, but I have to say, I was inspired to use the glitter everywhere because of that show. I'm also using this shade as my inner corner highlight and putting a little bit underneath my brow bone as well. I brought it up there already, but I'm just putting a little bit more specifically right underneath the brow hairs as an extra lift to the eye. Using the Clinique Pretty Easy Liquid Eyelining Pen in the color black, I am creating a small wing that also connects into the inner corner and flicks into the crease. I'm really loving the graphic liner trends that are going around right now, and I feel like this look could handle the fun graphic touch of the liner. This liner is one of my ride or dies as well. It is so pigmented, it's so black, it glides on beautifully. There's a super fine tip. You don't have to press it down to make the ink come out. You guys love this liner. Highly recommend it. So this video isn't really about the eye makeup. It's more about how to make your makeup last all day. So I wanted to include some footage here, but clearly wasn't paying attention to the camera angles. My bad. Sorry, guys. giving a curl to my lashes and applying some mascara. I am taking extra care on my lower lashes to really separate them. I feel like this is a play on a 1960s look with that liner and the lashes. I don't know, it just felt right, you know? Like, it kind of feels like a twiggy moment. I feel like this is definitely something she would have worn back then with a pop of color, so I just went for it here. For lashes today, I used individuals to create a unique lash that fit this specific eye look. I could have used a band, but I felt like creating my own lash today. I love using individuals because they give you the unique opportunity to not only create your own lash, but really cater to the exact look that you're going for. It may take a little longer to apply them, and it might take some time to get used to the process, but the end result is so beautiful and totally worth it. For my lip liner, I am using a favorite of mine, and that is the KKW Beauty Lip Liner in the shade Nude 1. And I'm coloring all of my lip with this liner to help make sure that the color lasts and stays. I went in with the Kylie Cosmetics Liquid Lip in the color One Wish because it's a nude with a bit of a peachy undertone. This lip, you guys, it will not budge all day, all night. This lip will still be on. And I'm using my busted finger with no nail to blend this lip. I always blend in my lip colors because it makes it, one, look much more natural, but it also takes off any excess product to reduce cakiness, which will also make it last much longer. Using my Dior lip gloss, sorry guys, this was a limited edition, but any gloss will do, honestly. I'm just putting this in the center of my lips and I'm finishing the look with one last go of the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. And that completes this long lasting makeup look. Thanks for watching you guys. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you next week with another tutorial.